John, and uh, thank you also for joining us here today in this, is, which is the first of a series of four talks based events, they, that, which have been produced by the Biennial with partnership support from the University of Brighton. And I should also point out that there is a, a fifth session on Sunday afternoon at Lighthouse, which has been produced uh, by Lighthouse. So I suggest that you take a look at your programme uh, to refer to that. Um, Brighton Photo Biennial 2010 New Documents, curated by Martin Hall is the fourth edition of the festival with a curated programme based here in Brighton and Hove and a related programme across the South East Coast over a six week period which opens to the public tomorrow, uh, running through to Sunday the 14th of November. Uh, for BBP 2010, Martin Park, the internationally renowned photographer, editor and curator, has produced a programme that explores the immediacy and vibrancy of contemporary photographic practice produced by a new generation of practitioners Newly discovered and reappraised collections of historic and vernacular uh, photography produced by commercial and amateur photographers, and it presents new commissions by internationally celebrated photographers informed by the diverse communities and contexts of Brighton and Hove. For this edition, the curated programme is based entirely in Brighton and Hove in our partner venues Brighton Museum and Art Gallery, Fabrica, Lighthouse, University of Brighton Gallery and the former cooperative department store, which is an unusual and un un alternative space, uh, which we're sharing with our partner, Brighton Photo Fringe. For the first time, therefore, the, the visitors to Vernial can see the entire program by foot. All the images are pinned directly onto the wall, making BBP 2010 the first frame-free um, photography festival in the world. And for the first time, we've created greater focus for our opening weekend events through a series of artist talks and panel discussions alongside a publisher's hub and information hub, all based here at the University of Brighton. The Bannel supports the presentation of the work of artists from a range of cultural backgrounds, commissioning new work, programming uh, recent work, and exhibiting historical work in new contexts for a range of audiences, from specialists through to the general public. The Biennial is a partnership-based organisation and works with galleries, visual arts organisations and educational institutions in Brighton and Hove and across the South East region. Our core partners are the University of Brighton and PhotoWorks and we work in close partnership with Brighton Photo Fringe and with whom we collaborate on various projects and uh, creating joint platforms. The Biennial aims therefore to reach a broad range of audiences and create exciting opportunities for engagement and participation through not only the curated programme, but also the education programme. And you'll see many examples of these projects both here at the University of Brighton and also at uh, the Brighton Museum Art Gallery. Through this and the core artistic <coughs> programme, the Biennial acknowledges the role of photography in everyone's lives. Now I'd like to briefly introduce you to um, our curator for 2010, Martin Park, <coughs> who, um, as John pointed out, almost needs no introduction. We do know Martin very well. Um, but I'd just like to point out that some very important um, the details in terms of Martin's background. Um, not only is he an internationally renowned photographer, but he's also developed a really interesting practice as a curator and editor um, over the last sort of 15 to 20 years. And he's also um, well known, as we know, for his, uh, uh, his reputation for using innovative imagery and his oblique approach to social documentary. And, as of equal importance, um, Martin has made a significant contribution to photographic culture both within the UK and abroad. <coughs> and since 1994, he's been a full time member of Michael and Photos. Um, more recently, Mike, uh, Martin was appointed Professor of Photography at the University of Wales Newport campus in 2004, and he's received numerous awards, including the Eric Simon Prize in 2006 and the Balma Mercia Award at Photo Espana in 2008 in recognition of his professional career and contributions to contemporary photography. Martin's produced over 50 books of his own work and edited 20 <coughs> others. And Martin was guest artistic director for the photography festival based in Arles in the south of France in 2004. Um, Martin was invited by myself to curate this edition of the band in 2008. And as uh, John mentioned, we're delighted that Martin accepted our invitation and uh, we're incredibly uh, pleased um, with all the hard work that Martin's done over the last two years to deliver what is a really exciting programme. So, <laughs> some background details. Um, I, I just thought perhaps what we could 
start with is um, if we could just look at a, a really sort of small detail, but actually I think in a way it gets to the heart of uh, the biannual, uh, I, I think, in terms of your approach. And um, perhaps we could just look at how did you arrive at the title, New Documents, as in a neat summary of the overarching focus of your approach to this edition of the biannual. Well, I have to confess to being biased because I myself uh, am fundamentally a documentary photographer, and I guess most of the work that I appreciate is in the mode of documentary. Um, and it seems to me that this is a, a genre of photography which is constantly developing and getting more interesting. And uh, if you like, this is a good chance to see new people from around the world who are pushing the boundaries and pushing the possibilities of what can happen with a documentary. The subjectivity is getting uh, more intense. The relationship and the connection of the photographers to the worlds that they explore is really the key to what makes so much of this work interesting. And it's that quality of connection that I'm constantly looking for when I judge photography. <coughs> uh, that's not to say that uh, there are all the work in this uh, festival is work that uh, could, be, could be done by me. I mean, we have a lot of people who have staged documentary work, and I think this, uh, this whole idea of this new movement of staging documentary is absolutely fascinating. We see Alejandro's work, <coughs> which is here in the, uh, in the University Gallery, where he's staging these remarkable tableaus, where he's uh, shot them at moonlight, and he's rehearsed these people and he's got them to stay still for anything between three to ten minutes after rehearsing it with them, going through, checking the lighting, based on moonlight, then throwing in flash. I mean, the technical expertise in just making one photograph per month is extraordinary. So he had to spend, uh, you know, two years in this one place. He lived in the community. He knew everybody there. So I think it's that way of pushing the boundaries is what's possible with that connection, which is really the thing that has made uh, so much of the work here so fascinating for me. And all I'm doing is ultimately, of course, is presenting a platform for the things that I've discovered in order that people can share my excitement. I mean, that's the fundamental driving force of being a curator. But it is based on that whole idea of the excitement of the discovery you find of the people and having a chance to share it. Um, I know that, yeah, definitely the, the word documents throws up that reference to documentary, but I'm also thinking about the idea of the new, because um, that's a, a very particular um, approach I think you've taken, um, you focus on the idea of the new as a criteria for certain. Um, for sure. Um, so perhaps we could talk a little bit about now, that. one of the things that to me was very important, I think a festival is, should be about the process of discovery. Now, many of the festivals I go to, and I go to a lot, because luckily uh, I get invited to exhibit in many throughout the world. You go there and half the work maybe you know already, and occasionally you might see things that are new. I was determined, therefore, that within this program, uh, that everything should be entirely new. Because if it's, if it's new to me and new to everybody else, it has to be more exciting. Whether you like it or not is a different matter. But you have the problem whereby you need some names to draw people in. So the way we solve this is by, uh, we have some very well-known photographers who are relatively new. I mean, 10 years ago, people didn't know who Alex Soth, Ringo Kowachi, or Stephen Gill were. They're, they're new kids on the block, but they're quite clearly people who have already contributed quite a lot to our photographic culture. They, they've got their voices, they're very strong photographers. So what we wanted to do with them was to invite them to do new work. So you also have the possibility of seeing new work by people that are quite well known. I also like the idea of it potentially connecting with the audience in, in, in Brighton, you know, because one of the things that's important is that uh, we are international, but at the same time, we're based in Brighton, it's important that we connect with our local constituency, and there's no better way of doing that than by showing people how other photographers have actually explored and looked at Brighton. And when we go and see the show at the Art Gallery, it's remarkable how different these three bodies of work are, and how entirely unrecognizable from each other they are, but they're all about their version of Brighton. Uh, so it's connected and disconnected at the same time. And it's this whole process of, of trying to be local, but also having a big international you know, presence. We have photographers, you know, flying from around the world to contribute. So it's being local and international simultaneously, which I think is very important. And just again, keeping with that theme of the new, the, sort of the approach uh, that you've taken to focus on the new, uh, can you talk about about what it is about the photographers that you've selected. I mean, you did mention Alejandro just now, but perhaps we can open it up. Um, about, just talk about the photographers you've selected that suggests that their work is new in direction. What is it in their work? Well, I see, uh, I mean, I'm very lucky because I travel a lot uh, because of these exhibitions, because I do assignments abroad. 
And I therefore see a lot of new work. I see new books, you know, and I, I think I'm quite well informed. How on earth do you therefore decide what it is from all that work out there that you actually think is quite special? It's to do with this recognition of seeing something you haven't seen before. So um, that's the thing that excites me, because you know, when I'm doing, for example, student reviews, you can look at stuff and you can see where it comes from. You can read their influences. And the great thing about a photographer that sort of makes you stand back and think, wow, that's interesting, is you don't know quite where they came from. You know, you don't really understand the influences because they have turned the influences. And we all need to be excited by other people's work in order to get that spark flying, but then they've turned it into their own. And that's the thing I think that you'll find with all the people, I hope, in the, in the shows that we present here, that you'll recognize. You, know, you won't have seen it before. Because, you know, photography is so predictable in a sense. I mean, we are meant to be the alternative radical side of, of photography, but we too have very set rules. There are certain things you're allowed to photograph. There are certain things that are expected of you. Photographers love nostalgia. I mean, there's certain rules that you can actually find about how contemporary photography operates. You know, there's a certain type of photography. You can analyze it. So part of my job is to sort of understand the set rules that are there and see people who are thinking outside the box. Okay, but this partially account for why we have such a, an extensive selection outside the UK and also the particular photos that we seem to take around Latin America and and the various other strands that have emerged. Yeah, um, absolutely, because, you know, because I'm working on this um, <coughs> book about Latin American photo books, which is coming out next year, which is fantastically exciting. It has meant that over the last five years, I've done a lot of travel in Latin America. Not only have I shot there, uh, but I've also been going around the major countries trying to locate the books, which is a project which Horacio Fernandez is editing, which will be published next year with Aperture. So this is going to be a, a very exciting book. <coughs> I think with one go, we're going to completely re-examine the whole way in which Latin American photography has been read. So it, that's a great project to be part of. Because of that, we have correspondence that we found from different countries. So we have uh, some in Mexico, some in Argentina, some in Brazil. And for example, when I was in Argentina, uh, Marcelo Brodsky, who's a very good photographer, he did a very interesting book called Good Memory. And he's also actually the director of Latin Stock, which is a very commercial agency. But he offered to, uh, for example, set me up a day in Buenos Aires where he would find eight, nine photographers that he thought were interesting. And I took this opportunity up. And in walks that day, it, it, incredibly high quality of work, the two people that are in the university gallery. So you need correspondence. You need people you can trust. You need, if you like, to have those introductions. And then you can utilize them and collect them together and then make a selection to represent here. Because it's not easy for uh, curators to go and travel around all these countries in the world. But uh, as I say, because I'm driven by my search for books and because of my widespread travel, I can take advantage of that. So all the time I'm using correspondence. People I trust, people who I know have got a good eye, and most of these are photographers, in fact. That's interesting. Photographers are very good at understanding how good another photographer is. Almost better than curators. There's a controversial thing to say. Because we know what goes into a good photograph, right? I'm not saying that creators don't understand that, but I think, for example, with the photographic book that I did with Jerry Badger, you know, the people we asked more than anyone else, what are the books that have influenced you were the photographers? And they really helped to inform the basis of our choice because we wanted to have it whereby the photographers had an input. We didn't want the curators and the photographic establishment because if you think of the photographic establishment, the history of photography as we know it now, it's written basically by academics sat at their desks in Europe and America. That to me is not an exciting prospect. Although we have to accept that, and the true history of photography is of course entirely subjective, it's constantly being revised. And we think of our photo history book as a revisionist history. It's a different history. And the history is based on the perspective of the photographer, not the curator.